Hello everyone, and welcome to this YouTube series on SQL Alchemy. In this video, I'll introduce you to SQL Alchemy, show you how to set up an SQL Alchemy environment, create a database with data, use SQL Alchemy's Object Relational Mapping System, or ORM for short, and show you how to create database tables using Python classes. So first off, what is SQL Alchemy? Well, it's a Python library for working with databases. It provides an Object Relational Mapping, or ORM, system that allows you to interact with the database using Python objects. This makes it much easier to work with databases than writing raw SQL code. So SQL Alchemy is widely used in the Python community, which means that there's a lot of support for it and documentation available. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced developer, you can find help and resources online to help you learn and use SQL Alchemy effectively. To get started, you will need to install SQL Alchemy using pip, the Python package manager. There's a few different ways we can open a terminal on VS Code. First is we can go over to the Explorer and right click down here and we'll hit open an integrated terminal. And from there, it will open up the terminal. We can also go up to view and down to terminal. And if we press control tilde, it does open up the terminal. And in here, we'll go ahead and type pip install SQL Alchemy and press enter. I already have it installed, so it's going to say that I already have it installed. And so from here, we can just X out of this. All right, and now we can start using SQL Alchemy in our code. First thing we'll need to do is create a database engine. The engine is responsible for connecting to the database and executing SQL commands. So we'll go ahead and right click over here. We'll click new file and we'll just name it app.py. So first we'll import create engine from SQL Alchemy. And then we will create an engine variable and we will set it equal to create engine. And inside this create engine function, it'll pass a parameter of the URL. So depending on which database you're using, the URL will be a little bit different, but there is a general template we can follow. And the general template would be the dialect. So which kind of database you're using, uh, you can add an optional driver. If you're using something different, that's not built in and you follow it by a colon two forward slashes, and then the username followed by a colon and then the password. Then you do the at symbol and specify the host. So generally it's an IP address, followed by another colon and the port number if you're using a port. And after you enter all that in, you put a forward slash and specify which database you're accessing. So here I've shown you an example of the PostgreSQL, MySQL, and Oracle databases. They are pretty much all the same, except for this beginning part of the name of the database. You can see here we have PostgreSQL plus Psychop G2, which is the specific driver we're using. That's a general template, but we'll go with an example of a PostgreSQL database. And you can see here we have PostgreSQL plus Psychop G2, and then we have our user, password, host name, port, and the specific database we're accessing. We won't go in using PostgreSQL and all these other ones. We will just focus on SQLite. Now, SQLite is a little bit different here. For SQLite, we don't need to specify username, password, host, and port. We can just specify this colon memory colon. That will put all of the data we create in the database into our computer's memory, which will be lost when the program's over. Or we can just specify a path to it. So for example, we can go SQLite colon and then the two forward slashes. And for this specifically, we can pass the path in our file system to the database. So we'll start off with one forward slash, which is a relative path to wherever we're running this file from. If we want an absolute path, then we can add a fourth forward slash, and that will go from the topmost directory. And generally, when people have issues connecting to a database that they're creating, it's this three and four slash except. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead and do three slashes and then database.db. We're going to set this into a variable and we'll call it db URL. We'll just go ahead and put this in the engine. All right, and for now, we're going to go ahead and import a uh, declarative base from sqlalchemy.orm. This is what we will use to create different models. So after this engine object, we'll go ahead and do base equals declarative base. And then at the very end, we will type base.metadata.createAll of our engine. The base.metadata.createAll of our engine will go and create the database and all of the tables associated with it. And whenever we run this, it will create the database. And right now there's nothing in it. 
So since our database has been created, we want a way to view our database. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can view a database, but straight from NVS code, we can go over to our extensions tab over here. And we'll go ahead and type in database client. It is gonna be this one with the orange and blue. We'll go ahead and click that and go ahead and install it if you don't have it already. And this will add a tab on the left side for database. So we'll go ahead and click on it because we don't have a connection. So we'll go ahead and create a connection. Close this at once. Go. And so you can see there's a bunch of different options for different kinds of databases. But since we're just going with SQLite, we'll go ahead and click on that. And it wants us to provide the path. So we'll click on this icon. It will ask us for the path. It already opens up to the folder we're in. So we can just click on this database.db, open it. And we'll go ahead and click connect. So right up here, you can see this is our database that it connected to. You can see it does say a host and a port, but we don't have to worry about that. So we'll go ahead and click on this icon. You see there's no tables in this database, but we can go ahead and create a table. So we'll go ahead and head back into our file. All right, so anytime we want to create a new table in the database, we need to create a class of whatever we want to call it and have it inherit from base, which is the declarative base that we assigned to base right here. And each time we want to go ahead and set table name equals. This is the variable that SQL Alchemy will use to name the table. Generally, you want your class to be singular and then your table to be a plural version of it. So our table will be called users and they will have user in them. So now that we've declared our table, we need to add some columns to it. So generally, whenever we make a new table, we want it to have an ID to make it unique. So we'll go ahead and set it to ID equals. And we will set it equal to column integer and we'll set primary key equals to true. And so this primary key will make it an identifier that'll make it unique in this table. So these IDs will never repeat and they will always be something different. We can also add a couple other columns, but one will add his name and the name will be a string. We will add age, which is an integer. And so, and also to use these columns, integers, and string values, we need to go up to SQLchemy where we have our create engine and add these additional imports of column, integer, and string. And you can see that my syntax highlighting is now registering these. So now we can go ahead and run it and nothing happens. So we know that everything was successful. We can go over here and press this refresh button. And we can now see that there is a users table that we've created. We go ahead and hit the drop down. And it does have the columns ID, name, and age. We go ahead and click on users. It will then show us the table of ID, name, and age. And if we have any data in here, then it will show it here in a list. So to wrap up, SQL Alchemy is an important library for anyone working with databases in Python. It's ORM system, database agnostic code, powerful features, and community support makes it a valuable tool for managing databases in any project. Well, that's it. You now know how to set up an SQL Alchemy environment and create a database. In the next video, we'll go ahead and start adding values to this table. If you found this video helpful, leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more.